I got a haircut yesterday and <laughs> and I got my blood drawn this morning. So uh let's do this. My concussion is recovered enough to be working on this video, I think. And I got a much bigger response to the last video than I've gotten to previous videos, and for that, uh, thank you. You're really cool. I'm glad that you enjoyed it. I'm a little nervous because I'm really worried about if I'll be able to make something you enjoy again. <laughs> but we'll try. We'll see. We're here. We're gonna try it out. I mean, isn't that what art is? Just trying. Just doing your best. Anyways, let's paint an ink portrait. I'm going to start out mixing some shades of ink in these little bottles using Noodler's Heart of Darkness. Since the ink is so potent, I'll need much more water than ink, so I put half an ounce of water in each jar first, using a scale because somehow that seemed a better idea than using a measuring cup at the time. A little ink goes a long way, so I try a drop, test it, add another, etc. just to see what happens. I've also got this handy set of photography cards and use the gray one as a reference for middle gray. After trying out some mixes, I ended up with these four. One of them being just full ink, no water, so it's easier to use than straight out of the bottle. I have a few thumbnails in my sketchbook, trying to grasp the general feel and look of the painting idea. And I'm going to draw the full piece out on a plain piece of printer paper. Try saying that a couple times fast <laughs> to transfer the watercolor a lot to transfer to the watercolor paper afterwards so that I don't hurt the watercolor with erasing and drawing and more erasing because all those lines will show up in the final piece and affect it. I start off the drawing with some loose shapes and then define it with a brush ink pen, which will be easier to see through for the transfer. I wanted something simple to focus on technique, but I felt kind of bored with just a face. So I started sketching in some locations to put some flowers with a red pencil. Again, going from general shapes to more specific. A quick Pinterest search for September flowers brought me to references of aster flowers known for blooming late summer. So I start defining the flowers with those in mind and add a couple butterflies for fun. I messed up my first attempt at this painting, so I start second guessing myself and want to try out other paper. The first paper I used was a student grade, which is totally fine, but didn't allow for as much layering as, and blending as I needed to do. On these little sample pages, I'm comparing the flow of black watercolor to ink. While you can see some similarities in how the water plays with the texture of the pigment, the watercolor moves very easily on the page while the ink settles right into it. So there's flexibility, but what you put down is going to be much harder to change or play with when you're using ink. I'm also trying out the same thing on some super smooth Bristol paper and some highly textured watercolor paper. Here they are all dry and side by side, cheap watercolor paper at the top, Bristol in the middle, and the extra rough watercolor paper on the bottom. While I loved how the watercolor played with the extra rough paper, the ink just did not benefit from the texture at all to me and the edge on the Bristol paper was way too sharp. So I'm gonna use watercolor paper to try this painting again, specifically one of my old favorites, Strathmore Ready Cut Water Paper in Hot Press for a Smooth Tooth. It's not very thick, but it is 100% cotton, which is essential for a good paper. I'm hoping this will stand up well to some blending and not stain immediately. Next, I'm going to transfer over the drawing using some tape to secure the paper, and I'm silly, so I first tape it onto the wrong side and quickly switch it back over. This process of transfer can take a little while and be a bit meditative, so it's a perfect time to pop on that. So it's a perfect time to pop on a podcast. I'm loving the Draftsman podcast, by the way, which you've probably heard of, but if not, I'll have a link for that in the comments below as well.
For transfer, I'm using a light board, this very simple thin one that I found on Amazon. It uses LEDs and is so much easier to use than my old one with light bulbs, just because it's not so bulky. After a quick lightening of the sketch with a soft kneaded eraser, I start out the inking with my lightest blend, four drops ink to half an ounce water, dividing first the edges of the flowers and the butterflies so I don't lose them, which happened my, with my first attempt of this painting. With the first light layer of florals inked in, I start carving out some of the facial features. I tried putting down water first, dripping the ink into it, and it turns out to be much easier to blend out and soften that way. Because I'm enjoying that effect, I try putting down the hair that way, being more dramatic with how much water I put down first, and I use this big old chonky brush uh, to block it in. I like it so much that I drop in my next darker shade just to see what happens when it dries. Before it dries, I do soften the edges a bit and add some wispies of hair, and hopefully this turns into something. And this is why you don't leave your brushes sitting in water. The wood will warp and crack and you'll lose bristles, as the glue holding them in will soften. I'm so sorry, little guy. I really like how the water blooms turned out, so I'm going to fill in more of the body shading with the same technique. I'm not sure if I want to go into outlines now, in flat ink, and I'm thinking first I want to try another layer of deeper, darker ink when this one dries. Ooh, and there's suddenly a bunny on my chair. Hi, bunny. Hi, cute stuff. I'm concerned also about losing the flowers in the hair. And I totally forgot to draw in the flowers on top of her head, even though they're literally right there in front of my face. But oh well, we'll get back to them. From here, I'm going to do a final round of my darkest shade, not the full ink, because I want to keep it soft. I might go back in and use that though on a few details. One thing I am doing, despite relying on line work more than I intended, is trying to keep the lines thicker in places where there would be more shadow. This gives an illusion of volume much more than flat straight lines everywhere. Next I go back in and start to block out some more of the volume of the hair, making sure to leave it kind of soft and wispy so that it keeps that hair texture and painting in the direction of the volume of the hair before I start to go back in and refine a bit of the facial features, adding emphasis to her profile and then finally going back and filling in some of those flowers on top that got left behind. With that done and that layer dry, I go back in and start to do another layer of my darkest blend. I believe that's the 64 is what I have it labeled as. Going back in again to the flowers, I want to make sure that they pop out more, but as the ink dries I can tell that it's not going to pop out a whole lot on its own. So after I go back in with some of the flat ink to build more volume into the hair and to refine a bit of the face again, I'm going to dip into the white ink that I have. It's called um, Deleter White. They have a couple different kinds. It's really good to use a brush with. And it's something that I think manga artists use a lot. It gives you this really nice opaque white. Well, not completely opaque, but a very, very good white contrast. So I go back in to where my flowers are overlapping with the hair and use that to just help them pop out a little bit along with outlining the butterfly where it overlaps 
and I think that looks a little better. It's easier to tell what's going on. It's not the optimal choice, but I think it was the right choice for this painting right now. With that done, I go back into the face again because I feel like it's gotten too flat with all the volume elsewhere, and I use just some soft blending with one of my lighter washes to give a little more volume to the face without giving it enough detail to compete with what the flowers are doing. And because it's never done, I go back in with one more layer and a little more dark wash before I finally f call it done. Whew, that was quite a lot of talking. Thank you for sticking around with me. Thank you for listening to my dumb voice and watching this video. I'm glad that you're here. I hope that this one was a little bit interesting, a little bit informative. That's it for now. Uh, thank you guys for joining me. It was a pleasure to draw with you. And if you don't mind hitting the like button, it would help others find my videos too. Also, if you want to join me for next time, be sure to hit the subscribe button and the bell icon so that YouTube will let you know when my next video posts. My next one is going to be about prepping for Inktober, hopefully a little more useful than this one was. But if you have any specific questions about ink or any ideas that you'd like me to explore, let me know in those comments below. I will, would love to take that into consideration for helping to make my next video. I want these to be informative and hopefully a good diversion from your day. So, uh, yeah. Thank you, friends, and I will see you next time.